Welcome to Sit Down News. Tonight I'm going to speak about part two of the Johnny Santori story. Uh, I told a story about when John had to watch me one time and um, he came to my house and we were there and it was getting late and he started to ask me what I wanted for dinner. And I was being a little wise ass and he was mentioning all these dishes and all kinds of food. And I kept saying, no, I don't want it. No, I don't want that. No, I don't like that. <clears throat> and I was testing him. And, and finally he exploded. He says, what the fuck do you want to eat? I, I named a half a menu for you. And um, I gave him a hard time. And then finally I said, all right, I'll have meatballs. And I didn't know at the time that John was a good cook and he loved to cook. So he says, I'll be right back. I'm going to go walk to the butcher. And the butcher, we lived in Old Howard Beach at the time. The butcher was maybe about four or five blocks away. And so I was standing by the window and I was watching, you know, watching him go. And I stood there watching. I was laughing. And here he comes back and he's walking down a block and he's got two plastic shopping bags. <laughs> he's carrying two plastic shopping bags. And there's these two women that are walking towards him. And as he gets closer, I notice that he's either mumbling, he's talking to himself. And the women, <laughs> and the woman cross the street and go around him and then cross back over when they when when he passes. So when he comes up into the house, I said, I want to see if he'd seen it. I said, Hey, hey, John, let me ask you something. You were talking to yourself. <laughs> He was so mad. He says, yeah, that's right. I was talking to myself. I'm fucking cursing you. And, <laughs> and anyway, he wound, up, he wound up cooking for me that night. And he was a very good cook. And he got his mood changed, obviously, when he was cooking. And um, anyway, the next story is in reference to John had a lot of scars all over his whole body. He was all scarred up. And... In particular, he had a scar on his elbow that that wrapped around his whole elbow. And a lot of times he wouldn't talk about things. If I asked him something, he would tell me, mind your business. And um, so I asked him one day, I said, John, what happened to your elbow? So he started, he was in a good mood. He started laughing. He says, ah, he says, you know, we we went a bar fight, bad one. He says, and a guy snuck up from behind me and hit me with a hand axe in the elbow and he says you know you know those movies the cowboy movies the western movies so i said yeah he says you ever see when the guy you know they do something and they pour uh whiskey on their cut he says that's what i did he says i told the bartender give me a bottle of whiskey and he said i grabbed the bottle he said i poured half the bottle on my on my arm and anyone who knows if you get a little cut and you put alcohol it hurts. It hurts like a bastard. So he says, I went to my car. He says, and when I closed the car door and got inside, I was screaming. He says, I was like screaming and crying in pain. He says, but I didn't want to look like a sissy in, in, in the joint. He says, you know, in front of everybody. And, um, you know, John stood with a, with a crew of guys. And these were the guys he stood with in the neighborhood. And uh, in the blog, I named some of them. Um, one is uh, Paulie G, Paulie Gazzara. And Paulie is related to, for those of you who know, the actor who passed away, Ben Gazzara. He was related to Ben Gazzara. Um, another guy is a guy named Joe Blaze, who went out to Florida. And uh, uh, an Irish guy named Jimmy McGinty. And I explained in, in, the, in the blog that, you know, the mob is always looking for new guys, especially young guys, and they want new talent and they want to bring them into their fold. And in this particular case, they could have brought this whole crew, you know, one of the families could have took this whole crew in, but they were so dangerous that they had to break them up and they did break them up. And, um, and Paulie, Paulie G, Paulie Gazzara was taken by Fat Andy Ruggiano. And Fat Andy, for those of you who don't know who he is, he's an old, he was an old time, he passed away, he was an old time Capra Regime with that crew, with the Gambino crew. 
very well liked, very well respected, a dangerous, dangerous guy. He was from my neighborhood in Ozone Park. He had his club there. And um, he takes Paulie in. And, and Paulie was a thief. Paulie was a jewel thief or any kind of thief. He would do scores all the time. And I mentioned he, he usually went alone. Occasionally, John would go on a score with him. They would do a score. And, um, but there was a movie um, that came out, I think it was in 81, and it was called Thief. And it was with the actor James Kahn. And James Kahn plays a jewel thief and uh, a safe cracker, a jewel thief. And we always felt that that movie was about Paulie. We even think that Paulie might have um, consulted on that movie. He would never, he would never tell anybody if he did it, he did it. And um, the movie kind of was about a guy that was going to do one last score and he was involved with like a local wise guy. I think his name is Leo. And the wise guy didn't want him to stop doing scores and wanted to take money from him. And they wound up having a big showdown in the end. You should watch the movie. It's a good movie. Um, Paulie had something similar happen to him. He was doing scores and Fat Andy on one of the scores wanted him to give, wanted Paulie to give him a cut of the score. And Paulie refused and didn't want to. And from what I heard, the story goes that Fat Andy tried to corrode him, tried to caught Paulie and, and almost killed Paulie. He didn't kill him, but he almost killed Paulie. I, I think Paulie had like a scar on his neck from that. And, um, you know, Paulie was always doing scores, like I said, and, and I didn't write in a, in a blog. Paulie one time did a score and he had ultra suede sports jackets and he he pulled up and, and he opened the trunk. He says, hey, you 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 want to you want to you want to take a look at these and I and I liked one it was a navy blue one and he took sixty dollars off me he says just give me sixty dollars and I gave it to him and John found out about it and he cursed Paulie he told him what the fuck are you taking money from this kid for and Paulie wanted to give it back and he and he and he wouldn't let him he wouldn't let him give it back to me he says no I'll give it to him and, he, and John gave me the money for the jacket but he was mad at Paulie for doing that. And I didn't really like that Paulie did that. He should have took money from me. But anyway, John winds up going with another old time in the neighborhood named Ciro Perón. And Ciro Perón was another Capricogene with the West Side. That's what we called them, but you guys probably know them as the Genovese family. And both um, Ciro and Fat Andy were both straightened out in that life before they closed the books. You know, at one at, at some point in the 50s, I think they closed the books on any new any new members getting inducted. And they were both before that. So they were old timers, another well-respected guy, dangerous guy. Um, Ciro had his club in my neighborhood on 89th Street and 101st Avenue in Ozone Park. And as a matter of fact, it was right upstairs from that club that John had an apartment. And that's where John winds up passing away. Um, Ciro really loved John. And that was like Ciro's guy. That was Ciro's pit bull, if you would call him. But that was Ciro's guy. And, you know, that love turned into hate. And there's a reason why. I'm not going to go into it now. And that hate went on for like 20 years and it had to do with John being falsely accused for something that he didn't do. And um, for those of you who know my situation, I also know what it's like to be falsely accused of doing something that you didn't do. And it's, it's not a good feeling um, for John, John, it was a 20 year situation that wind up rectifying itself um, but we'll get into that as I continue to write. It may be three parts for John or maybe four. I just don't want to rush it. And that's why I did part two. And I tried to get this in. You know, usually I put a blog in on Sunday at some time. And I just wanted to get this in early. I've been working on it. And um, I did my best. I hope, I hope everybody enjoyed it. I'm taking off. I'm going to bed. If you have not subscribed to Sit Down News, subscribe down below. Good night.